Hello students, in this video we'll define the Ricci tensor and the scalar curvature invariant. Let's recall that we have our Raymond Christoffel tensor. R, L, J, N, P, which is D by DXN of gamma L, and then I'm missing a J and a P, minus D by DXP, gamma L, and then I'm missing an N and a J, plus gamma, and then we have an N, A, L, gamma, A, J, P, and then minus gamma, P, A, L, gamma, A, N, J. That's our Raymond Christoffel tensor. And so we know from a previous video, one of the Bianchi identities states that if I look at R, L, dot, L, if I trace over this L over here and then do an N, P, we know that this quantity over here is equal to zero, right? And so that's one of the Bianchi identities. And so now what we want to do is I want to consider like tracing it over those other two variables over there. So now we'll define Let's define um, R of, um, I'm gonna replace the J's with I's and the P's with J's to just make my life a little bit easier. So I'm gonna do this over here, I'm gonna do an I, and then an L, and then an L, and then a J over here, right? So I'm tracing over L. That's what will this give me over here. This is gonna give me a D by DX N, so what's my N over here? So my N is now L, so that's gonna be an XL over here. A gamma L, my my J is now an I, and my P is now a J, like that. And then we have a minus D by DX P, my P is now J, like that. And then I'm going to have a gamma of L. Okay. Good. X P, and that's J, good. And then we're going to have an a J and an N, so that's an I and an L. So an I and an L, like that. Good. And then we have a plus gamma of N, which is now L. L is still L. A is still A. A is still A. J is now I. And P is now J. Like that. Great. And then what will we have next? Then we're going to have a minus gamma L. And then my P is now J. My A is still A. My A is still A. My N is now L. And my J over here is now I, like that. Great. Okay. So let's see what we have over here. So this expression over here is called the Ricci tensor. So the Ricci tensor, so R, I, J, which is R, L, dot, I, L, J, is called the Ricci tensor. Okay. And the Ricci tensor occurs all over the place in mathematics. All right, so let's figure out some properties of this Ricci tensor. So let's simplify this. So what's one immediate consequence of this of this formalism? So what was I say about Rij? So Rij in coordinates, all right, the Ricci tensor in coordinates, is equal to what? Well, this is a d by dx l, so I do an l derivative. I'm tracing over this l now of gamma lij. That can't be simplified at all. But now I have a gamma of LLI, right? So now this is going to be the XI derivative over here, X, uh, XJ derivative of the XI derivative of the XI derivative of the log of the square root of G, right? Because that's the formula we know when we trace over one upper index and one lower index of the tensor over there. And then the same thing happens over here, that I'm going to have a plus gamma IJA, and then I'm going to have a D by DA, D by DXA, of the log of root g. And then over here, what are we going to have? We're going to have these mixed things. I have two things to sum over, right? So of course, this is symmetric, so I'm going to write this in a more symmetric form. Gamma of i, l, a, and then gamma of a, j, l, like that. So I'm tracing over both a and l over here, right? So this is a beautiful formula for the Ricci tensor over here. It allows me to do calculations very simply, right? Because this is the determinant. So of course, recall here that the root of g is the determinant of g i j, like that, okay? Square rooted. Great. And so now I want to do one further thing. So note, so what are some basic properties of this thing over here? So one remark, one, one thing that's trivial to verify, so proposition. 
The Rigi tensor is symmetric. Okay. Of course, the proof of that is straightforward. Proof. If we change i and j in the above equation, what happens over here? So changing i and j. doesn't change this expression. Let's call this expression star. Doesn't change star. Okay. It certainly doesn't change this. It certainly doesn't change the second derivative over here. It certainly doesn't change that by the symmetry of the Christoffel symbols. And it certainly doesn't change this on changing all the a's to l and all the l's to a, right? Because those are just dummy indices. Beautiful. So it's a symmetric tensor. So in other words, rij is equal to rji. Now we're in great shape, so I have this Ricci tensor, which is a two-covariant tensor, right? This is a two-covariant thing, two-covariant tensor. And what this Ricci tensor does is it gives me two other beautiful tensors over here. So what I can do now is I can define, I'm going to say R scalar is this invariant over here. And what's this invariant going to be? It's going to be Gij upper. R i j lower. So if I trace both the i and the j in the Ricci curvature and the Ricci tensor, this becomes the scalar curvature ten scalar curvature invariant scalar curvature. In further videos, we're going to see two examples of computing the scalar curvature invariant. And once we have the scalar curvature invariant, we can define what it means for a manifold to be Einstein, right? And so we say so. Definition. We say that a manifold is an Einstein manifold if R i j, the Ricci curvature, is a multiple lambda of the metric tensor g i j. And of course, if this is the case, we can use this curvature invariant. If I trace over this thing, if I do a, if I hit this with the inverse matrix over here, we see that this lambda over here, so if I do a gij over here and then trace, right? So if I trace this thing over here like by doing both of those components over there, I'm going to get this lambda has to be the dimension of the space, right? So in other words, by tracing this, we see exactly what this has to be. So if I do a gij upper over here, that would give me r scalar. r scalar over n is going to be the dimension of that space over here. So this is the Einstein equation over here. In further videos, what we're going to do is we're going to construct the Einstein tensor, and the Einstein tensor is going to be the, uh, the Ricci tensor minus what? The it's the Ricci tensor minus one half the scalar curvature times the metric tensor, right? We're going to see that by using the differential Bianchi identities that for these Einstein spaces, the uh, vacuum condition for the Einstein spaces is, tr is satisfied by the Bianchi identity. So we're going to actually do the differential version of the algebraic Bianchi identities, sort of the anti-symmetrized version of those, and then use that Bianchi identity to prove the fact that uh, to start our discussion of the Einstein field equations, and they're nothing more than just basically the Bianchi identities with up to like the right scaling of what your tensors or what the dimension of your tensors are in terms of the general relativity theory um, in that regard. So in other words, if we basically start with this Raymond Christoffel tensor and do subsequent traces, if I do two traces of this thing, if I do one trace and get rid of one, two indices, if I do another trace and get rid of another two indices, and that is going to be a scalar invariant quantity you known as a scalar curvature in which we'll see spaces of constant curvature play an important role in understanding the structure of manifolds. Thank you very much.